There we go. Hello, hi, my name is John Bell. I'm the director of the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry at the University of Connecticut. And I'm going to turn off, turn off the redundant Facebook feed, live feed. We're really happy uh, to have this program uh, tonight with uh, Abby Bosley and, um, and her friends, uh, Cleo Catra and Wendy Wags. This is, um, of course, part of her uh, Puppets Helping Pets uh, program project that she's done as uh, part of her MFA work at the University of Connecticut. And I just wanted to say a few words about Abby, who we've been really happy to work with over the past three years, in fact, here at the, the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry. Abby's a sculptor and a makeup artist and a puppeteer and a performer. And uh, as I mentioned, has been with us at the Puppet Arts Program for the past three years. She's graduating or uh, like within a day or two. She did her undergraduate work at Penn State University and uh, at UConn, she's really jumped into the world of puppetry. She's worked with us at the Ballard Institute as a tour guide and a workshop leader and a museum assistant and has been really, really popular working with people uh, at uh, in, at, in all of those functions at the Ballard Institute. So um, uh, Puppets Helping Pets is a really fascinating project. It's gone through a lot of so, different steps, some different changes, and it's really come into being, especially at this time of the COVID-19 situation. She designed this, this puppet service project to help shelter pets by raising awareness through informational and entertaining social media videos. So I'm gonna just step away and turn this over to Abby, who is going to take it away and I'll come back at the end. Uh, uh, probably Abby will explain, we're hoping you can post your questions to Abby on our Facebook live feed and take it away, Abby Bosley. Thank you, John. So my name is Abby Bosley. Of course, I am a museum assistant. I am a tour guide and I'm a workshop leader at the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry. I'm also a soon graduating, I think one or two days um, from the Yukon Puppet Arts Program, uh, getting my MFA. Yay. Um, so as part of your graduation in the master's program in the Puppet Arts Program, um you have to come up with a mfa project so that could mean anything and <laughs> so with mine um i knew one thing from the start i really love shelter pets i really like um advocating for you know taking care of shelter pets and all things that we can do to help them even though we can't adopt them um even though we wish we could but I made a project that I thought would help out shelter pets. So I want to show you some behind the scenes pictures. I wanna show you, um, I wanna explain how I built the puppets and why I built them the way that they did, that I did. Um, and I'm of course gonna be taking questions the entire time. So if you have questions at any point, please type them into the comments and I will see them and I will respond to them. Um, and at the end, of course, I'll take a moment to, if anybody missed and wants to ask anything else, of course, we'll take a moment at the end. But otherwise, um, I'm joined by my two puppets that I made. I'm only controlling one. Um, this is Cleo, who's my cat character, and this is Wendy. So we have an all-girls team right here. I'm very excited to show you. I'm sorry, Cleo, this is going to look gruesome. <laughs> Let me share with you, though, I've made a PowerPoint to share some fun behind the scenes stuff. So I should still be visible, but here's my PowerPoint. All right, so Puppets Helping Pets is my MFA project. Um, shelter Pets is the cause closest to my heart. I, of course, wanted to 
Um, because I have a platform to talk to people at the Ballard Institute, I would love to show you pictures of my pets. Um, this is maybe the only time where I can do this, you know, unprompted. So first that's Madame Leota, she lives with me now. And then living with my parents, we have Jovi, the dog, Wendy, the fluffy cat, and Luna, the little black cat. So all of those are rescues. Every pet we've ever owned has been a rescue. And it really, I think it wasn't until Wendy that I realized what an awesome, Wendy being the cat, um, that it's really awesome to help out at shelters when you can and if you can't adopt a pet you know little crafts that you can do things that you can do to help them out so this was always the cause closest to my heart and it's always the thing that i knew i wanted to do with puppets um, when i pitched my project i did not originally pitch this project um, i when it came time to pitch the first idea that i had in my head because it was running you know time was running towards the wire i couldn't think of what I wanted to do. And I thought, well, why not make superheroes that help animals? Because, you know, that's the only idea I could think of. So I have the very first iteration of the puppets helping pets, which is not what they were called at the time, was the two Power Ranger lookalike pets who were rescue pets that rescued pets. Ooh, I know, I'm so clever. So that idea was the first one that I pitched. And I was never quite passionate about it. It was just sort of like things that I liked that I mashed into a ball and pitched. And the understanding was, this is a project. This is an okay project. Let's think of a better one. So I re-pitched this idea next door to them, which was the Pup Town Girls. The Pup Town Girls are also rescue dogs. However, they don't rescue dogs. Um, both of these projects were meant to be mascot performances. So both of these projects were meant to be two or three people, human beings, in mascot costumes because I have an interest in mascots and I have done some mascot performing in my life. And I thought, why not make some of my own? And mascots are sort of larger than life. They attract attention. So if I made mascots and they were at a, let's say an adoption event for animals at a shelter, it would get attention, you know, it would attract attention to the shelter and to the event. So originally I was just working with making mascot characters that could perform at adoption events. So I had, Power Rangers did not last long. Power Ranger rescue pet lookalikes. Uh, the Pup Town girls lasted a little bit longer, but something about them didn't really, keep my interest either. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I just, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about how I had come to a puppet school and I kind of wanted to make puppets and yes, mascots are puppets, but I had never actually made puppets like this before. I had never made puppets at all in my life before I came to Yukon. So I really wanted to dive into this world of what can we do with puppets and especially I started to become really interested in social media and the idea of shows that take place on social media. Um, I think there's a lot of, of course I'm in a theater program, there's a lot of push towards live theater, but I started to think about with social media how exciting it would be to create a show that lived online and could be experienced by everyone everywhere. Um, social media has done a lot for pets in the past few years. There are studies now that are showing that social media has significantly helped pets get adopted because people are posting profiles for adoptable animals and other people who are browsing whatever social media of their choice can see those pets and maybe they wouldn't have, you know, looked on a website before, but they're seeing them on Instagram or Twitter and they're responding. And even if they're not adopting those animals, they're seeing shelters that they're connecting with and they're, you know, donating more supplies or their time to help. So social media has already helped animals. So it was just sort of like all of my interests combining into one. Um, I decided to come back at it and I started to think more about the social media influencer characters. And the first one I designed was Wendy Wags. So Wendy is next to me. <laughs> um, Wendy Wags is a dog. She's a mutt. She is Visually, her look is taken a little bit from our dog, Jovi, 
her name comes 100% from my cat, Wendy. So I really like to take people and things that I love in my life and like honor them in my work. So this was my way of giving my girl, Wendy, a little shout out by naming a puppet after her. It's very confusing when I talk about my puppets and my pets now. <laughs> um, so the design that you see in front of you is the first one that I drew of her. And it's pretty similar to the Wendy that showed up next to me. Um, the only thing that both of my pets lost in their design process was they both had hair and the hair did not survive. So there's Wendy Wags and Cleocatra, who visually does not take any inspiration from any cat, but her name and her personality come from a pet that we had adopted many years ago, who is no longer alive, but that's Cleocatra right next to there. So Cleocatra was, I'll say, the first pet that I walked into the shelter with my dad and said, please. So we left the shelter with a cat. So Oh well, they let they gave me naming rights and I named her Cleocatra because I was a very smart elementary school kid. So I like funny names and I thought Cleocatra was kind of a cute name to give to this cat here. As you can also see in that design, Cleo lost her hair as well. So both of these characters that I was designing were originally going to be puppets and mascots. Mascots were going to go to events and puppets were going to do social media shows with um, everything that happens, um, COVID complications as I've been calling it. Um, with COVID, I decided to cut the mascots simply because I could not make them in my apartment and also because every event that I had wanted to take these to, and I'd been talking to shelters in my home city of Philadelphia who were interested in um, using the characters for events and those events all got canceled and I cut the mascots because of that. So. Just so you're aware, these were meant to be both mascots and puppets. Let's walk you through some of my design process. So I will, of course, show you a little demo of this later, but all of my puppets, which are these two, <laughs> there are two puppets, they uh, were built to have removable limbs and bodies. So I was diving into this world of learning about TV puppetry, which is something that I had not known anything about before, and learning about all the kinds of tricks that they use. Um, you know, of course, if a character isn't seen below their belly on the camera, they probably don't have legs. So using things like that, but then understanding that these characters were going to, you know, need to be in shots where their full bodies were visible. And also considering with the cutting of the mascots, you know, I really wanted to be able to use the puppets at live events as well, which meant that they needed full bodies. Um, I started to worry about how can I create two completely identical puppets and I decided that it will be tough to but let's make removable parts on them. So I'll do a demo of this later but their arms, their tails, their heads, and their control rods on their hands are completely detachable from their bodies and each of them has two bodies. So you can see in those pictures, Cleo has legs in one body and does not have legs in the other body. I will show you that later. Um, let's see. They do have removable tongues as well. I will do a demo of that. It is a bit gruesome to tear my puppets apart, but they do not feel it. So they do have removable tongues, which once again was going to be used. There's a few shots where Wendy licks the camera or pants. And so having a longer tongue was cute for those shots. Um, the, the process of patterning the heads um, was one that was taught to me, I'll say half and half by a few people at the Puppet Lab. Um, I do have to give credit to Will Smith and Maggie Flanagan who helped me through a lot of this process. Um, what's cool about the Puppet Arts program is coming in and I have a really cool unique skill set, not to brag, um, but so does a lot of the peers coming in and they all have really cool unique skill sets and so even though i've never made a puppet in my life somebody who has made puppets can teach me their process and i can learn from that but then i can turn around and teach him how i do something so uh both of them as well as paul spirito helped me a lot with the creating of the puppets i had very distinct images in my head of what i wanted them to look like and I am a sculptor, that's, that's one of my many hobbies, 
but sculpting in clay was not difficult for me, but imagining how to turn that into a foam because the puppets are made of foam and they're hollow, which is not something I'd ever done before. So I sculpted, that's oil clay, which is just a clay that does not dry. I covered it in tape. You'll see I'm drawing the arrows to show the direction that the fur would be running because I wasn't sure if these were going to be fleece or fur yet. Cut the tape off, trace it onto foam, and you can see that that actually created the pattern that I used for both of them. Um, and then I used a cheaper upholstery foam, like you might buy at Joann's, that's the green stuff. I used that for patterning because it's a bit cheaper. And then in white, you'll see that's an open cell foam, so it's a little sturdier. So I used that for the finalized puppets. The big question of whether to use fur and fleece together, one or the other, was a tough one for me. Um, I've sewn fur before. I like the look of fur. I like fluff. Um, and of course, I wanted my pets to have lots of fluff. But you'll see that there was a little bit of an issue. My first thought was, well, I'll just keep their muzzles out of fleece and I'll make the rest of them fur. So on the left hand side, you'll see Wendy's head for first iteration. It just looks like a puff ball that somebody stuck a mouth on. Really didn't look very good. Um, what my solution ended up being was I realized that when I was drawing these characters, I sort of drew them with, I'll say a Felix the cat looking face. They sort of had outlines around their eyes and cheeks. And I thought, well, what if that was fleece? Because it looks a lot more cartoony and to make a deliberate decision where you're going to see them, you know, would create sort of a stronger character. One of the things that I've always kept with me from Penn State where I did undergraduate and I did a lot of art classes, well, I did a lot of theater, but I did a lot of art, was that a deliberate decision is better than nothing. So for you to just go, I don't care, is a lot worse than saying, well, I chose to make it a fluff ball for this reason. So thinking about, well, I wanted to seem it, but what's my deliberate decision? How can I make a choice that will work for my character? Um, I did a lot of fur styling with them as well. I'll show a little bit closer up later, but they've got nice short fur around their faces so that it blends in a little bit better with the fleece. In Cleo, this was especially exciting to see her fur cheek tufts um, emerge from that. Their eyes, by the way, are spoons that I cut off the stems of, or the holding part of the spoon. <laughs> Don't know what to call that, but I cut off the holding part and I used the round part. I sanded the edges. That part would be underneath her eyelid. Very important to include paws on your puppets. Um, I just wanted to show off that including little details really brought them to life. Um, I don't know, it was really exciting to see like the image on the left you're looking at and putting, you know, image on the right. I got paws and all of a sudden that character came to life. I'll show a little bit better in a second, but hand paws do have an armature inside, so the arm rods are removable. Having every aspect of these puppets be removable was really important to me, not because, not only because I wanted to swap them out between bodies, but because I wanted the pets to be really easy to travel with. So the idea being that if I got invited to go to an adoption event somewhere else, it would be super easy to pack them in a bag. And the only other puppet that I've ever made with arm rods, I had attached them in and he kind of has to be stored like a mummy when he travels and it always bothered me that there you know, wasn't an easier way. So Maggie Flanagan, who I mentioned earlier, had done a little bit of work with using what I've always called in the costume shop whopper popper snaps. I don't know if everybody uses that, but that's what every costume shop I've been at has called them. So she had been experimenting with using whopper popper snaps and having a snap inside of a hand and using a whopper popper on the other side of the control rod to snap in. So I had really good success with that and I'll discuss that more in person in a bit. The filming setup, um, I hadn't filmed it and then all of a sudden UConn switched to online format. Everything started closing. Um, places that I had been hoping to film, I could no longer film at. So I took video there. It looks cute. It looks so nicely set up. That's my apartment. I could only film in my apartment and the field directly behind my apartment. Um, and I made all my own graphics, including the one on the right. 
the original cast was going to be me as Cleo and Alex Campbell, who is an MFA acting student at UConn. I had cast her as Wendy. Um, due to everything with the virus, um, I was no longer able to use Alex as a performer, but I was able to use her voice. She recorded voice lines for me, so she still is able to be Wendy in that way. And I voice Cleo, <laughs> in case my voice didn't give it away. I also got to include people I love in my video. Um, I think at this point I'm talking about my video as if everybody's seen it. If you haven't seen my video, it's okay. Watch it after this. It's okay. It's only 10 minutes. It's on YouTube. Um, but I wanted to show off that I got to include people that I loved. Um, I had had such grander plans for inviting in special guests from shelters and different projects around the town. And, you know, once everything started happening and things started closing down, people got really busy. And I realized I could only turn to the people like immediately in my vicinity. So um, the human character who is the pet's owner is Allison, who lives with me, was able to be their owner. Um, my brother, Jack, composed all of the music. My mom voices Cleo, or she voices Leota. I'm sorry, I voice Cleo. She voices Leota. Um, I couldn't get a real guest to be in my show because everything was crazy. So I had my cat do an interview because, you know, if you have the power, put your cat in a video. So she voices Leota, and then I put in my dad. Because maybe if we go back far enough, he is the one that let me get the original Cleocatra. So maybe he gets some credit too. Um, they do have social media. I say they as in the pets. I am the pets. I am the social media. Um, the pets do have a social media page on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. They have a website. I do, I just purchased puppetshelpingpets.com. So when that one's up, I can swap it over. But for now, they're at puppetshelpingpets.card.co. Um, and they have a YouTube, which the Ballard Institute has already linked. So if you follow their Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you can see posts such as these. They post cute things, mostly photos, not too many videos. Um, TikTok is where I started to get a lot of viewers for their videos. Um, the point of TikTok, I think, I think the, I'm not really sure how to say this. The thing that everybody does is that there is, there are videos, there are funny videos, and you copy the audio from a funny video and you recreate what they did in your own way. And so I, was, I, I don't know. I think that it's fair to say I was somebody who didn't know what TikTok was before this. Um, I think that people that are maybe around my age use Vine a lot. I remember Vine being the really hot thing like in and right out of Penn State. Vine is no longer a website that is up. Um, so Tracy Becker, who you might recognize from other Ballard events, was telling me if you want to hop on, you know, if you want to learn TikTok, I will show you how to do it. And Tracy was really awesome at showing me how to, you know, copy other people's videos on the site. But in copying videos, it links all copies to the original. So anybody who enjoyed one video could click through all of the copies and could find mine. So um, it was Tracy who told me that videos that were jokes about the coronavirus were the most popular around the time um, because I was making these videos just as that was starting to happen. So uh, one of the first video of mine that like really took off and got 2000 views right away was a joke where, you know, I'm copying somebody who's using hand sanitizer to kill 99% of germs, but then there's the 1% looking cool, the 0.101%. Um, before I go back to my real full video, I do want to show off just completed full versions of the puppets so that you can see them. I don't know. And you can see the difference between the full body and the half body. I'm going to set Cleo aside for a second so that I can come back to, I'm sorry, Cleo, you look un unhappy. And then there's Wendy and there's the half and there's the full. So I am coming back here. All right. So at this point, I can now see comments. So I'm just checking in. Um, I do want to make more sh shorts like this. Um, I am really excited to connect with specific shelters. I think when all of this rolls 
all of this, the virus rolls over in, you know, the next year or so, I think my goal is to start connecting with shelters again and asking them about what will help you. Um, I made this video as just sort of a anything you can do to help. And I got my information from a few different um, shelters and then from the Comfort for Critters, which is an organization that I sort of shout out in my video, is an organization that pushes for crocheting or knitting or sewing blankets for pets. And how that's such a huge help right now is to, in your spare time, be making blankets with spare materials and donating them to shelters and then the pets get to sleep on them. So in that way, I think that that was sort of the purpose that the first video um, served, but I'd love to connect with more shelters and I'd love to see what actually could help them. Um, everything was difficult in this process. I have never made this before. <laughs> This is my first time making this. And I think that it's okay to, as an artist, make something as your first time and, you know, experiment and take your time with it and learn. I made Wendy first and I had so many mistakes on Wendy and so many challenges with her that had me so frustrated at some times, but by the time it got to Cleo, I knew all the answers to those problems and I was able to fix everything that I thought was wrong. There's only a few minor fixes that I'd like to fix now. Um, but, you know, you build one puppet and then you fix those challenges. And now my second puppet, I fix those. But I came up with new problems. My third puppet, I will fix those challenges. You know, it's the, the hope is that you'll keep improving. Um, Let's see, I'm just popping in and checking in on questions before I dive into um, showing all of the extra parts that I have. Um, thank you, I love using repurposed things. Uh, so all of the puppets are hand sewn, which I think was the best and worst decision, um, is the best decision because with the fur, it lays a lot prettier and nicer and there aren't as many seams like that you see I machine sewed one arm and I hand sewed one arm on Cleo and I'm showing you the difference and you probably are not noticing the difference but to me I'm like angry that I machine sewed one of them so everything on here is hand sewed the only reason that I did not love hand sewing is because it took me forever um I had planned out an original calendar of this and hand sewing took me about three times as long as I expected. So this is the most I've ever hand sewn. Um, and now I know for the future though. Now I know for the future that I would have to give a lot more time <laughs> to do that. Puppets are, I have hand washed the necks of the puppets, which I will show you are removable in a moment. I've hand washed the necks and kept the heads separately. In theory, in theory, these would be washable because the foam inside of them is meant to get wet and meant to dry easily. But when I'm putting these together, I tried to think about what are the parts of the puppets that would be touching my skin and it's all the head. So I'll show you how the heads are removed in a moment. Can you see the puppets come to life? There's a video, you can watch that. <laughs> um, I had originally, so the third character in mind for this is that at the time um, of this, me making these characters, I always had wanted it to be an all girl, like an all girl cast, by which I mean two girl characters. Um, not just because I think that, you know, when they were mascots, sometimes female mascots sort of don't have a great thing going on. They're either a sister or a girlfriend. Okay, Wally has a sister. I think, I, I went through this, I did a whole PowerPoint last year of, here's the male mascot and here's her girlfriend or mom. So I kind of, when I was making mascot versions, I thought, let's just have girls to have girls. And um, so, through some of my department talking to me, they said, well, maybe you should consider a third guy character. And so I had started to sketch out a rabbit. 
there was a guy. Um, and then I decided that, you know, let's start with two. Let's go from there. And that's sort of where I've been since was let's focus on the two girls for a bit. But I love the idea of the rabbit coming back. He didn't have a name, but he was a purple and white rabbit. Um, both of my characters, I really like in character designs and especially with animals, I really like kind of normal colors, but with a pop of something fun. So we've got brown, we have dark brown on her foot and on her ear, pop of pink, <laughs> you know? Wendy's got gray and darker gray and blue. Um, so I really like the idea of using like natural colors with like a pop. So the rabbit was like white and gray with a pop of purple. Um, I'd love to see him come to life soon. So I'm gonna do a demo. I'm, I'm holding Cleo because I posed Wendy really nicely, but I'm gonna show you a little demo of how these separate. It might look gruesome, but I promise you, they are not hurting. They are used to this. So I have Cleo right now in her body, in her full body form. So if this was me at an event, I could be holding her in my hands and I could have my other hand here puppeteering her. Her back on this one is where her head neck hole comes out. So I can put that on and I can sort of hold her, and now she's coming to life. Sorry, Cleo. There are whopper popper snaps that connect the heads to the bodies, to the lining. She's got this fun leopard print, and I can tug her head out. She becomes a snake. So I have this and this. So let's say I'm gonna change her into her not leg version. And if you look nice and close, you can see that each one of those spots for a whopper popper, there's one there. They have one for their tail and one on each side for their arms. And there are ones in their lining. So I'm just gonna sneak this through here. And I could go in and I use the whopper poppers, just one on the front and one on the back so that they can't really like, their bodies have very specific fronts and backs. She has a white chest. Wendy's got a white tummy. So I could snap her in for their arms. They sort of attach and be attached the same way. So then I'm using that whopper popper and I'm popping it right back on. And same for this side. And it does look gruesome. And I think the first time I did this in front of my friends, they went, why, you just sewed it. And I said, but they have snaps. So now this is what her body whole piece looks like. I can set that to the side and I can attach her tail right to the back on her butt spot. Gotta have a butt spot. And this one, as you can see, the arm goes through the bottom of it. And so this is the one that was used for all of the uh, performances that you saw in the video. And here she is, ready to go. You look great. Um, let's say I wanted her to be posed in that really cute way that my cat Leota always poses, where she's got her tongue out like this. She just has her tongue out. So it was really important to me to have a Velcro tongue so that now I can put in a long tongue and she can do that cute cat thing. <laughs> so it's fun, it's fun to think about. I have a foot here for you to show off just what they look like on the inside. Um, but like I said, this is a test one. The real foam versions inside of them are the white foam that's reticulated foam or open cell. I don't think that puppets, I have never seen puppets with removable parts like this before mine. I'll say with removable arms and legs, I'd never seen ones that were fully removable. I've seen puppets where several versions of one character exists, but I think all of those people have studios that can make really spectacular puppets that all look similar. And I didn't have that. 
and you know i didn't know about my my skill in recreating them so for me it was really important to kind of save myself some work they weigh probably somewhere between two and five pounds they're not terribly heavy but they're a little they definitely you know if your hand is up there for a while they start to weigh on you i will show off my hands so this is what one of their paws looks like once again this is the test foam that's kind of fun colored um, and this is what the inside of one of their hands looks like so they actually do have opposable thumbs i think cleo makes a joke in the video about not having opposable thumbs she is a liar she does have opposable thumbs and she has fingers that can move as well though on the actual puppets there we go um so i have these for her these are attached they're just a whopper popper that's on a piece of plastic that i cut out um the thing at UConn that I learned that was stressed a lot was a mechanical and a chemical connection for things that are important. So this has the mechanical connection in that I drilled holes and it actually is tied around the back. So I used thread to sort of thread it to this piece. And then the chemical connection is that it also has epoxy on it. Um, I'm looking again, and is this a process for animatronics? Kind of. <laughs> um, there are so many different, I'll say, types of animatronics. I mean, with an animatronic, and puppets do fall under animatronics, which is a fun thing that people don't normally do or know, but with animatronics, of course, you have to keep in mind that they have moving parts inside of them. Um, but I don't think that, I think that with animatronics, you have to think about keep, like, if a character is performing on a ride, that character is doing the same thing for like 11 hours a day for like every single day of the year. My characters, if they were put under that much stress, would not survive. So I think that with animatronics, the process of creating foam bodies is true for some of them, but it's a much different process. Um, there are companies that take, there are companies and artists that take orders for individual puppets, but they are not cheap. Um, if you're paying for a real specialty product, you're probably going to be paying someone with thousands for something. Um, and honestly, if I was selling these, that's where I would price them simply for the amount of time that it took to hand sew them and the work that it took to figure out their detachable arms and such. I have an arm rod right here. It's a little tight in my quarters here, so I haven't been able to put the arm rods into the puppets, but I'll show you just how that would work. So here's the other end of one. I've color coordinated them because I like color coordin coordinating. Um, so here's the hand, the rod would snap in like that, and it's good to go. On the puppets, they have, have to get a pink one for Leo, come on. Really hard to see but they've got a little hole on the bottom of their hands, and so it comes out of this part of their hand. And so inside that hole is this structure. So if I take a hand here, and I have the same whopper popper snap, and that's just on a uh, copper-coated steel welding rod, and you sort of mash it around in there until you feel the snap. Usually I have to, like feel around for it there it is and you can hear the snap and then she's good to go i know too many things going on at once so at that point hmm i've shown off so many fun things are there any more questions that i missed out on or anything else that anybody wants to type out right now before we move on to our last section here I I have a I have a couple of questions, Abby. If I of could jump course. in, if that's if that's okay. Yeah. And if anybody else has questions, you can keep them coming for the last few minutes here. I'm gonna put on Cleo because why not, right? I was 
I, I, I'm, it's totally fascinating, Abby. I'm, I'm so glad that you're explaining these processes and all your design choices. It's super exciting and interesting. I, I, was, I was really fascinated by um, the, the video that's posted, that you've posted on YouTube, and we've posted the link to that a, a couple of times, so I hope people can see that. But I, I, I really liked the, um, the way that you designed that, and, and it's as a show, um, uh, it's structured kind of like a, a, in my mind, like a variety show. You because you have different mm -hmm. bits about different aspects of, of of pets and pets need pet needs. And I was wondering how you uh, how you come to to write those bits and how do you choose uh, the the content of of those short pieces. Thank you. Okay, good question. And I'll also tie that into another question I just saw. Um, so I, with those pieces, um, I knew from the start that they were kind of funny, but at the end of the day, they're giving facts and they're giving advice. Right. They are, they want you to trust them. They want you to know, hey, we're giving good information, but at the same time, they're going to have a little fun with it. So I knew from the start that I liked the idea of short little clips that were all put together and i started to take inspiration from like other people that i saw creating content during this time and a lot of people i think now that they're stuck at home started to make videos that kind of were making not making fun of but were copying the style of news shows and so there, you know, you're giving the news and now the sports and now the weather and now back to the news. And so I kind of liked that idea in mind and I started to take inspiration from that for this particular video. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, it'll always come back to Cleo at center, but then we'll hop to another segment. So let's hop to crafts. Let's hop to hearing from Leota. Let's hop to Wendy, who's in the field. Um, so that worked out really well for this one. And I know that for future videos, because I'm going to make future videos, don't worry, everybody. Um, I do want to make future videos and obviously they won't be all COVID related, but I love the idea of skits that are all put together. I think that those are a lot more fun than one hefty 15 minute story that you have to follow. I think it's a little bit more fun that way. Um, and as far as information that I was getting, um, I'm really thankful that I had been from the beginning talking with the PSPCA, so Pennsylvania SPCA, and I had gotten a lot of information from them about animal safety, and that's what I was originally going to base my content on. And so it became, you know, with COVID happening and a lot of people having questions about pets. That information people started sharing from you know different vets or different shelters started sharing their own facts and so I started to gather ones that way as well as the uh, comfort for critter information I asked them directly for you know I asked them for permission to give them a shout out but then um, they also have on their site a the no so blanket craft which is who I was able to take that from so Supplies, as far as supplies for the puppets, there's a bunch of places that I got supplies from. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like a little jumping around reading questions. Um, the fleece is from Puppet Pelts. We actually went and visited them, me and Paul and Maggie. We went and visited Puppet Pelts, which is a puppet supply store. Um, that's the thing. They, where, is, where is that located? It's located actually in Massachusetts. So it was about an hour and a half drive from the University of Connecticut. And I think I'd only known them from online orders, but I, we sent them an email and they were as friendly as could be. And we drove up and I showed them pictures of my characters. And at that time I'd already had first watches that I picked out that I really liked. Um, the fur is from fabric.com, which I'm very particular about fur. Don't get me started, but shag fur luxury shag as it's called is my favorite texture of fake fur so my animals are mostly luxury shag um so i was able to match swatches i'm gonna take a sip of water for a second and <clears throat> excuse me as far as cohesive characters <clears throat> i talked so much i'm so sorry excuse me 
Um, I knew from the beginning that <coughs> Wendy's character is that she's a little bit shy and she's a little bit more reserved. So Wendy is a pet who comes home from a shelter. Both of these, both of these girls are adopted according to their story. So Wendy is a little bit more shy. Wendy's come home from the shelter. She's a little skittish. She loves her family, but she's a little mm -hmm. skittish. Um, Cleo was adopted and Cleo loves life. To her, this is awesome. She shows up in a house and she is so thankful that she is adopted and she's here. So I really wanted to reflect their personality and their color. So she's all warm color and she is all cool. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that when we think about cats and dogs, we think about cats as being cold, dogs as being warm. So I wanted to mix that up. For future videos, <coughs> excuse me, um, for future videos, if you are interested in following along with them, them being the pets, aka me, um, their YouTube is just called Puppets Helping Pets. If you look at the link that the Ballard Institute posted that links to their video, um, <coughs> excuse me, I talk too much and I got a scratchy throat. Um, but if you go to their YouTube page, um, you can just subscribe right there to their videos. I don't post videos that often, so I promise I won't annoy you with them. Um, and that is my goal too, is right now my YouTube is sort of a randomly generated website. If my YouTube can get 100 followers, I get to pick a custom URL, which is a huge deal for me. I would really like to take youtube.com slash puppets helping pets. So my goal is trying to get to 100 followers. So this is me saying to you, if you really liked these videos and you'd like to see more of them, I would go right to YouTube and I would follow them. Um, if you have a Facebook, if you have a Twitter, or if you have an Instagram, <coughs> excuse me, I will post links. We can post links, of course. And I think that there's already been some posted in the uh, advertising for this event, but you can follow them. If you follow them on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, any or all of those, they will always tell you, they, me, will always tell you when there are new videos. But YouTube is probably the fastest way to see the videos. Otherwise, you can always keep up though with their fun pictures on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Are, th are, there, other, are there other uh, social media uh, programs uh, that, that, are, that are addressing themselves to the situation of pets or is, is what you're doing totally new? To be completely honest, I've never seen puppets helping pets before. Right. I've seen people that do social media with real animals. Um, I was really inspired and maybe, uh, maybe too inspired at times by looking at people who have big followings and educate people about fostering pets. Mm -hmm. who educate people about, you know, cat mm -hmm. health or dog health. Mm -hmm. And seeing what an amazing um, community that brings. People mm -hmm. who, if it weren't for these people on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, showing off their stories and explaining that, hey, really anybody can do this, you just need to learn how. And seeing people like that inspire people who might not have done that before. Mm -hmm. It made me think, I want to be a part of this because it seems like I not to I'm not putting myself down to say I'm just an artist, but I think that I think to myself, well, I just make art. What can I do with art? How can I help people with art? And this seemed to be the best solution to that was make characters that can teach people about ways that they can help. And that's a that's a very long, long standing and very important aspect of, of puppetry. To, mm -hmm. to let people know about, uh, you know, to educate people and to, to share important information with folks, in addition to doing entertaining shows and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we typically, typically think of puppet shows. So it's a real kind of community service or social service that, that you're offering there. So it's, it's really important culturally, yeah. I should think. I, I had another question about the social media aspect of it. Of course. Um, like you, uh, do you think it's worthwhile to use a variety of different platforms? Like you mentioned TikTok before, and 
Um, you know, would you go use Instagram? You're, you're on YouTube. Is, mm -hmm. is it advisable, do you think, to, to work with a variety of different platforms? Or do you, how do you think about that uh, aspect of your work? I think that it, there's good and bad to both. I think that certain platforms are really good at certain things, but are really bad at other things. Um, so each kind of has its ups and downs. I think that image wise, like I think that Instagram was the easiest for me to post images on and have people see them. And Twitter though was the easiest for somebody to respond to me and have a conversation with me mm -hmm. as I was posing as the pets. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if anybody I don't know is watching this from Twitter. I uh -huh. do voice both of these. Um, well, Alex voices this one, but it was interesting to see on Twitter, I had a bigger, bigger numbers of people on Twitter that would just respond to them and go, oh, you're so cute. Oh, this is mm -hmm. what I'm doing this week. The pets would ask a lot of open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. How are you staying occupied during quarantine? And I would get the most responses on Twitter, maybe because it feels more conversational um, versus Instagram, I wouldn't get as many people responding to mine, but I think it's easier to share images that way. Fascinating. So would you continue working in all of those different platforms? Yes. Hmm. I think that I will continue to update at least uh, the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter trio. Mm -hmm. um, I hopped onto TikTok because it's a fad. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand that it's a fad. TikTok mm -hmm. is also, you can only share videos on it. So none of my picture content really works there. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok got me the most views, but it's also the easiest for people to watch a video, hit the like button, and then scroll to something else. So I probably, when TikTok starts to fall out of style, I might not keep up with that one as much. But on the other hand, if another platform arises, if we get a new sort of website, a new social media site that starts picking up, I would absolutely jump onto that one. And I think that's the nature of the social media project that is kind of scary is to think, well, the only way that it can survive is if I keep posting. You have to keep creating content or else it will stop being seen by people. I, I had a question about the creating of content because I was really struck by, <clears throat> by the different uh, pieces that <clears throat> are parts of, of Puppets Helping Pets that's online <laughs> right now. And I wondered how you decide what to say in those short pieces and what you might be thinking of for f future installments. What, what kind of subjects would you cover and how do you figure out what to talk about? So for little blurbs and photos, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I try to think of a good, usually a cute sentence takes me like 10 minutes to 15 minutes to write because I need it to look perfect and friendly and the pets don't want to curse. They don't want to say anything negative. They want to keep it cool. They want to be friendly to everybody. So thinking about the kind of persona that I'm creating is tough, but also that persona is also me because I'm a friendly person and I don't really want to post negative things. So it doesn't come that unnaturally. Right. Um, <clears throat> but as far as the videos go, um, I'm really thankful to have and I still do want to work with them. Uh, PSPCA had given me a lot of their lessons to look at for um, when they do outreach programs with children in schools and had given me ideas for what lessons they teach. <clears throat> so I was looking, and that was originally my idea was to sort of follow their, and they're simple lessons, but they're things that maybe people, it's, it's important to learn and to know about. So I was going to follow those lessons. I also had reached out to a few different um, people in the area that work with animals. Um, the Enfield Community Cat Rescue was the quickest to say, oh my God, who do you want to talk to? We'll hook you up. And they had already talked about, you know, let's get you to talk with somebody that does that works at a shelter, we can get you somebody that feeds feral cat colonies. And so I do really want to do real interviews that don't uh, involve my cat. So I would love to have them 
both interviewing people that are in the field doing things mm -hmm. and shine light on what they're doing that's so awesome and helpful. And I also want to use that information. And then from there, see what shelters need. I really want this to help shelters. I know you have, there's, there's some other questions here in the question line. Um, and then, I, I mean, I could ask you questions all evening long, but uh, I don't know if you want to, 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 <laughs> to respond to some of the, the ones that have just come up relatively recently from Rebecca Rowe and Jack mm -hmm. Bosley. Of course. I don't know if anybody famous has seen these specific works. Um, my Madame Leota down here has claimed to fame is that a famous voice actor commented on a picture of her on Instagram and said that she's cute. And that a, an animator on uh, Isle for Dogs commented on a picture of Leota and said, cute. Mm -hmm. So Leota's got some claim to fame, but currently my puppets don't. So if you have famous friends, share my video with them. I would love a job, especially a job doing this. And I'm hoping that this will point me in the direction of, you know, or point people in my direction mm -hmm. who might be interested in my work or well, Otherwise. It's so fascinating and, and seems so useful. I, I, I noticed Rebecca Rowe's uh, question uh, or more of a uh, comment requesting videos for daycare centers and friends with children at home or people home alone deciding on a pet for companion. Actually, you sort of address that subject in, in your yeah. book, so. What's really exciting actually is, and not because of my video in any way, but there's been a huge push for people to foster animals, which right. in my video I define as you're not adopting a pet, you're taking care of a pet in your home until that pet is adopted by its forever home. So there has been such a push to foster animals that I'm actually starting to see like really fun news stories where people are saying, hey, great news, we actually fostered out all the animals and the shelter is clear. And of course, that's true in some places and not true in other places, but it's exciting to see that that's like, I don't know, that people are, are using that and, and are taking that advice that is being spread around. I don't know, it's exciting to think about. I, I love the way that, that what you've got up now responds directly to the COVID-19 situation. I, 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 I'm, I'm just impressed that you were able to, to turn around and, and, and make content that directly addresses that, this situation that we're currently dealing with. I noticed there's some very specific questions like, where did you get the rods? There is a local supply, uh, I guess, hardware store down the street from the puppet arts complex called Mansfield Supply that sells a lot of hardware. And I think the puppet students are probably notorious for going in and buying Right. the weirdest combination of things. <laughs> so when I go in and I buy 12 welding rods and they go, ooh, do you weld? They say, well, these aren't for that. Um, do I teach private lessons? I could for the right yeah. amount of money. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a sort of technical question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was struck by the, the relatively small group of people who made the video, but um, I noticed you used a, a video camera. I, I wondered about that technology and, and also the editing. Um, who, who did the editing and how, do you, do you, are you thinking of the shot sequence before you shoot it? So, uh, so that you can edit it later. How how does that work? I'm interested because you're you're doing it all yourself. <laughs> I did do everything so all cool. myself, which was not originally the plan, but became the plan when uh, COVID hit. So I I did edit the videos myself, and me and Allison, who lives with me and is across the room, um, she was able to record and she also performed in the video. And it was pretty much, we would set the video going, we would both walk to the place where we were on camera, we would get ready. Okay. Um, and so it wasn't as like, I wish I could have had a third camera person taking care of it. Um, I had already planned out the skit as far as the script in front of me. And I knew that there were some places where I wanted a close up and some places where I didn't want a close up. So 
the shots were not always taken in order. Um, I ended up taking a few shots that used the whole table, right. which is where it took place. I would take a few shots of that, and then I would sort of jump back to all the close-ups and then film those with the camera zoomed in all at once. Um, as far as the process went for it, I would record each line. I say a hundred times, but you know, maybe more, maybe less, but I was recording each line a bunch of times and then stopping, looking at all the recordings and going, is one of these good enough? So, yeah. That's so cool. Um, I know, it took a while, but I, I edited everything on Premiere. Um, okay. Premiere which was a learning curve in itself. I spent maybe three days struggling and wishing that somebody else would do it. And then maybe on the fourth day I went, okay, wait, I got it. I think I can do this. Uh, um, it started to make sense. So I did all that editing as well. A, a while ago, you, when you were in a really fascinating moment of, of this evening's presentation, you, you were switching the heads with, uh, switching the head with a different puppet. But um, when do you use the puppets with legs? I was, I was thinking about you, you're talking about doing, inter, for example, if you did an interview at a shelter, would you mm -hmm. perform with you, Abby, visible with the puppet? And would that be a puppet with legs? Or would you prefer to, to be out of the camera frame and just have the, the puppet character do the interview? I was actually thinking about that when I was planning out my interviews. And I realized that for all of the shots that you saw in the video are all the legless bodies. Um, and then I thought for interviews, it would be better to have the full body. Um, the way that I sculpted them is that their legs are sort of perpetually bent. So yeah. they always are sitting. Um, so I made them so that they're always sitting. So they could sit on a chair and depending on the kind of chair, maybe it's my dining room chair where there's a hole that my hand could come out of and maybe not, maybe it's just in my lap, but because the camera is focused on the puppet, you're not noticing me. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't necessarily have Abby Bosley as a present, a screen presence in, 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 in that work. I don't think necessarily though. Mm -hmm. I think that for, if these puppets were ever doing live things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that there is sort of a magic to mm -hmm. a performer holding a puppet. And mm -hmm. if you perform the puppet well enough, uh, you disappear as a performer. Like, I think that there is some magic in that. So I think for live, if, when, if and when these open up and, you know, go to adoption events, it would just be me holding it. And I think that the puppet would attract so much attention that I would disappear. It sounds like one of our our viewers is interested in taking private puppet lessons with you, which is interesting. And then Jack Bosley wonders if uh, any donations to uh, Comfort for Critters had been made as a result of, of, of your work, if you know. I don't know. I, I really want to. I would be curious to ask. I mean, unless somebody went forth and said that, though, unless somebody, and I've had people comment, oh, I made a blanket, but I don't know the number of those people. But it would be really cool to imagine that, you know, a lot of people are making blankets inspired by my video. Are, are you, I know you talked about build, uh, creating a rabbit, a, a yes. third puppet. Do you, do you imagine just maybe you don't know because you're sort of at the thresh, threshold of a new situation graduating with your MFA degree from UConn. Would, do you think you can or would pursue this with more characters if? if I think well? I would start small and the goal is to smart, start small on these. And any new characters would be specific bits. So um, in the, the story, in the story that I've created for these characters, both of these pets live in the same house with one owner. Um, I don't think that that owner would decide to adopt a third animal. Mm -hmm. I think that a rabbit would appear as a neighbor's pet who is teaching the pets a specific lesson. And maybe the same is true for, I'd thought about, uh, like a bird character. Maybe a neighbor has a bird and they get to talk to the bird every few episodes, but she's not around all the time. Sure. <clears throat> These puppets specifically, um, 
when I sat down and looked at how long it took me, it took me two, uh, six full months to make both puppets and all of their parts. Mm -hmm. So I guess mm -hmm. using our simple math, it took me three months to make each puppet. Right. But I wasn't on a linear path the whole time. Yeah. I was making one leg and two leg, three leg, four leg, and then I was putting the legs aside, and then I was doing the bodies, and then right. I was putting those aside, and then I was doing one head till completion, and then I was doing the other head till completion. Yeah, that question, how long does it take to make your puppet, comes up a lot, and it's sort of complicated. Yeah. <laughs> because when you're making puppets, it's, as you just said, it's in steps, it's in different chapters, yeah. there are different types of work involved. Oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. What was I going to say? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. <laughs> well. Is it time for the, um, oh, I know what I was going to say. I, I noticed like in, in thinking of this rabbit, um, in, in our neighborhood, there's mm -hmm. a lot of rabbits, which have, they've sort of come back in the past couple of years. And I was thinking of the, another, another COVID related situation is people talk about animals sort of coming oh, yeah. back into urban spaces because the humans aren't around so much. I wonder if that's, that's the a kind of uh, the nature of animal activity that, that could show up in, in one of your videos. One of the things that I had been maybe, I don't know if slightly inspired by, but one of the things that I learned about was I, I love, I, I hate to admit it, I do love cats. They are my favorite animal. Um, I know everything about, not everything. I know a lot of things about cats but I don't really know too much about too many other animals. And so uh, once again, Maggie Flanagan comes up and we had been talking about, she was, you know, teaching me sort of about these New England cottontail rabbits that I, you know, you know rabbits, but you're going, I couldn't tell the difference between that and the rabbit that goes outside and eats our tulips. Like, I don't know the difference. And so thinking about, obviously that type of rabbit should live outside. Mm -hmm. and how the types of rabbits that people take in as pets are meant for that purpose or are different types of rabbits. And so I thought about with the rabbit character that that would be a lot to, like there's a lot to sort of talk about there, how we can't just go outside and trap a rabbit and say we have a pet. There needs to be a lot. And same with birds. I think birds are super misunderstood as far as like, sure. let's just get a parrot because it'll talk. And thinking about sure. what are the things you need to keep in mind, are you actually equipped to properly take care of a pet. I like this comment from one of your fans, Kathy Campen, who says, I've enjoyed the workshops, uh, especially uh, that the ones that you, Abby, have done. And in some ways, I don't want the COVID-19 quarantine to end because I will miss seeing them. So I, no, don't really worry. Great. I maybe this is a, a good time to segue into I am actually going to be working on a workshop this Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, right here on the Ballard Facebook Live. Me and Tracy Becker are going to be doing a it's not quite a craft. It's going to be an ask a puppeteer anything. Yeah. We're going to be talking about our beginnings of our careers here at UConn and showing off some of our past projects. So I will say if you have questions for that, if you know you're going to attend or know you're going to watch it later, and you'd like us to answer a certain question, you can uh, comment those on that post on Facebook, or you can email those in um, to the website or to the email that's on the on our page somewhere. Um, yeah. But if you ask us questions, we will be happy to answer them. I will not be showing these puppets because I just showed them today. <laughs> so you will get to meet more of my puppets. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the way that we focused on this aspect of your work, but I know that, you know, you, you have a lot of different ways of approaching the world of puppetry, which are so cool. Mm -hmm. I also, I wanted to mention that, um, that, that also on our uh, Ballard Institute Facebook page, uh, Facebook live streaming uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and Friday night at 7 p.m., will be live streaming the Puppet Arts Finals, which are projects that uh, Puppet Arts students uh, have been doing um, all year long. So that's gonna be super exciting. And next uh, Monday evening at eight o'clock, we'll be doing a, an event um, with puppeteer Sarah Frechette, who's a Yukon Puppet Arts grad, who did a, work, a lot of work with a German puppeteer named Albrecht Roser. And, 
and that, that's going to be an interview and demonstration and, and talk with, with Sarah. And we're planning um, uh, events uh, all summer long, continuing the puppet workshop series that Kathy Campen has found so. Uh, Don't worry, I've got a few recorded for you. <laughs> There's more Abby Bosley coming up. And we're, we're uh, you know, we had to switch all our programming to online because of the COVID situation. And, and that's been really great because uh, mm -hmm. we've got to see uh, work that, that you've done, Abby, that's so awesome and inspiring. And, and um, uh, all the other uh, puppet art students who've been involved with this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, 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 I love the way that, that you, you're, you've a achieved this. And, and did, did you, you know, thinking of where you started and where you've gotten to and all the twists and turns and that, mm -hmm. I don't know if you would, could you have ever imagined that you'd end up doing what you're doing with, with this project when you Not started? Not a hundred percent. I think that I, once I got the social media idea, it went in a direction and then COVID put it into another direction. Mm -hmm. But when I started here at UConn, absolutely not. This was not my intent in any way. And not that I didn't want to be doing this, but it just isn't what I was imagining doing. I came in with I, I didn't know what to expect. So I'm excited that I came out with something that I really like and that I'm passionate about. And I think they're just so darn cute. So I love having them. <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> and um, and, and you, it, it seems like you're really inventing something new here, a, a new way to connect with people through social media and the and these uh, and, and your puppets mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know the the characters of puppets are uh, excuse me of pets are, or animals are so mm -hmm. uh, that's such an exciting area going back to like Aesop's fables which are very very old stories and uh, and, and the history of people like um, Sherry Lewis who uh, who some of the oh, yes. questioners have mentioned you know um, have done so much with with puppets and you're doing so much with these pet puppets, animal puppets, mm -hmm. right even as we speak. <laughs> Gotta stay clean, right? Watch those. Cats are really good at washing their paws. We should learn from them. Is it time for the bloopers? Rio? I think I don't it know. is. So I will say to end this presentation, I put together a minute and a half of the three bloopers that I think are the funniest. Um, of course, more will be to come as I make more videos. So Thank you, everybody, and thank you to Ballard, too, because thank you, Abby. it's been really awesome getting to show off my work in this way, and I know that we didn't expect this semester to end this way, so this has been really awesome that I've been able to uh, showcase my work, I think, in a way where I've been able to share it with more people than I could have ever imagined, so thank you so sure. much, Ballard Institute. Well, we're very lucky that you to to be able to be part of this, and and I, I really thank you for for sharing your work with us this evening. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Bye. <laughs>
You okay? Getting my hydration. 